is what loops can do to us. In other words, what are the common tasks that are usually asked and should be solved by loops? I, I will first explain the idea of those common tasks by an example on JGrasp, and then I will show you what are the steps that you should follow to do these tasks. So let me go to JGrasp. This is now JGrasp, and I have prepared a program okay, for solving common tasks. So I will call it a common task problem. In this problem, as an example, we would like to write a program that reads a set of integers. So we are going to read a set of integers and any number to stop. So we will read a set of integers. Whenever there is a negative number, then it will stop reading. So this indicates that we need a sentinel control while loop. Your program is required to do the following tasks. So these are the tasks we are talking about. Muhimma. Task is muhimma. First, we need to find and print how many numbers did the user enter. And this task is called counting. And by the way, we have solved some questions before that involves counting. For example, we ask you a question on to, uh, a question that asks how many male and female rabbits. So that was counting. Uh, next task is find and print the sum and average of the numbers. So we are going to read integers. We would like to find and print their sum and average, and th these are also another tasks. Let us write first the loop for reading. And then we will show you how to do the first task and how to do the second task. Now for reading, we will ask the user and we will say enter a set of integers, enter any negative number to stop. So we don't have a sentinel like minus one. The sentinel, we have a plenty. Any negative number will be a sentinel. So we are going to read a number. I'm going to define it here as an input. I'm going to call it number. And then we will read it. So number is equal to n dot next. I will assume I'm going to have integer. Or let's just define it double. Okay, let's define it double and then here we need next double. Then we will have the loop and now it says that negative number to stop. So there is no need to take the negation because if you want to take the negation then when it should continue, it should continue if we have positive number. But you can do the following. Write the condition as if it is negative. So number, how to represent negative? It is less than zero. And by the way, zero is not negative. So, and you put here the exclamation mark, and now your loop will continue reading as long as there is no uh, negative number. Or you can write the condition as while number greater than or equal to zero. This is opposite to negative. So either you use the negation and put the condition as it is stated in the problem, or you can find its negation. And here we will say process number, and then you have to update read again for number. And to read again for number, simply repeat this statement, copy it, and then paste it. And this is for update. So we have initialize, we have condition, and we have update. Now our first task is counting. So we need to count. So if we want to count, what are we supposed to do? So to count, you need to do three steps. The first step is that you need to define a variable that will work as a counter. And before you enter the loop, you initialize it to zero. It should be integer. And before the loop, you initialize it to zero. Step number one. Step number two. Inside the loop, you need to update this counter. Sometimes you need to proceed it by a condition. 
So if there is a condition, you proceed it by a condition. Otherwise, you just update it by plus a plus. Last step, after you exit the loop, you display its value. These are the main steps that you need to do for any type of counting. Let us implement them on our example. So this is our example. Before the loop, we go before the loop, anywhere before the loop, we define a variable. I'm going to call it counter and I'm going to initialize it to zero. This is a step one. Step number two, inside the loop, we need to update this counter. Now, do we have a condition to proceed this counter, update counter or not? Here we are counting the number of uh, the, uh, count the numbers that entered by the user. So there is, there is no specific number that we need to count. For example, it might ask how many negative numbers. So we have a condition negative. But here we don't have any condition. So simply write it anywhere inside the loop. Count the plus or plus. This will tell you how many iterations at the same time, how many numbers did the user enter. Now when you finish the loop, now you need to print its value and say you have entered and displayed a value to the user numbers. So the output, the output will be you have entered the number we will get from the counter numbers on the screen. By running the program, and now the program is asking to enter a set of numbers 34.5, 67.4, 23 so we have entered the three numbers I will give it negative number for example minus one and so it printed on the screen that you have entered three numbers now the second task finding the sum and average of the numbers so what are the steps that we supposed to do to find the summation of these numbers and their average. Let us see those steps first and then we will follow them and write them down in this program. Now to find the summation and average, to find the sum and average of a variable called number, in our program already the variable is called number, we have to do the following. First, before entering the loop, before entering the loop, we need to define two variables. One is called count and the other one is called sum. We have already defined count. Its job is to count how many numbers did the user enter. And now we need to define another variable which is called sum and both of them should be initialized to zero. So count will count how many and sum will find the summation and we need to do this before the loop. Inside the loop, we write count to plus or plus. This is for counting, we have already done this. And also we need to write sum of plus equal number. See now this statement, it is called accumulator. It's not a counter, it is accumulator. It accumulates to jamma. It accumulates the value of number into sum. Sum in the beginning is zero. The first value we read from the user will be added to sum. The next value will be added to sum. Next value will be added to sum. So we are adding all numbers entered by the user into this variable. Where to do or where to write this statement? We write it inside the loop. Now, after exiting the loop, now we need to compute the average by dividing sum over count. And you know how to find the average for, for numbers. You find their summation and divide by count. So to compute the average, you compute the average when you finish the loop. You cannot uh, compute the average inside the loop or before the loop. After you finish the loop, then you compute the average and you compute it by dividing sum over count. And then after you finish, you display both sum and average to the user. Let's go to JGRAS and implement those steps to our program. So now we are in JGRAS. We would like to find the average and summation of those numbers. Step number one, we need to define variables count and sum. Count is already defined. Now I'm going to find summation of these numbers and these numbers are defined as double. So I need to define a summation and make it equal to zero as double, not as integer because the data type is already double. And for count, it is always integer because we are counting. So we cannot define, we cannot define counters as doubles. Inside the loop, we already have count to plus or plus. Now we need to do the accumulator. So 
accumulating the values of number into sum. You write sum plus equal number because number is the number you read from the user and inside you accumulate those values. When you finish from the loop, now here we need to compute the average. So average is equal to sum you divide it by count. And remember, sum is defined as double and count is integer. So double over integer will be double. So we don't have any problem uh, in this statement. And then we will print. We print the sum or the total, the sum of the numbers you have entered is, and you print the sum. And then we will write the average, control V, the average of the numbers that you have entered is, and you display the average variable. Now we run the program on the same set of data we have from the previous run. We run the program again. So enter a set of integers, paste. So these are the numbers. So our output is you have entered the three numbers. The sum of the numbers that you have entered is this, and the average of the numbers that you have entered is this. Here there is a small modification we need to do to the program, because what if the user does not enter any value. So let me show you. Now when you run the program here it says enter a set of numbers, enter any negative number to stop. What if the user decided not to give any number? It will give only minus one. So it will not enter the loop because when it reads minus one here, it will not enter the loop, it will go outside. So what happens for the average? It will divide zero over zero and we are going to have a problem on the output screen. See? It says you have entered zero numbers, the sum of the numbers that you have entered, and see what does it say for the average? It says overflow, not applicable number. So how to solve this problem? To solve this problem, you do the following when you exit the loop. Check for the value of count. If it is equal to zero, that means the user did not enter anything. So if the user did not enter anything, then there is no point to say that the user has typed zero numbers and the sum is zero. Simply display a message. Tell the user there is no data input. Or there are no, you there are no numbers entered. And then you stop your program by saying system dot out. Uh, sorry, system dot exit, and you terminate your program. So if the user just type minus one, it will display there are no numbers entered, or we can say there is no data. Is better. There is no data. And now when you run it. So we will put minus one, and now when you press enter, there is no data, so it indicates that the user did not enter anything. Here are some questions on counting. For each question, I have a color for it. So for the first question, it is in a blue color. For the next question, it will be green color, and etc. If there is a question is asking for how many numbers did the user enter, and we have already solved this. So for counting, remember three steps. Before the loop, you define a variable, just follow the blue color. You define a variable that's integer, you initialize it to zero. Inside the loop, you update it by a plus or plus, and outside the loop, you print its value. Another question we could ask on counting, we could ask you how many even numbers or odd numbers did the user enter? This is also a counting task. So follow the green color before the loop, 
you have a variable integer you and initialize it to zero inside the loop you increment it by one but see it is attached with a condition because not every number entered by the user is even so if you want to check if it is even we check number modulus two equal equal zero if this is the case then we increase the counter and if you want to check for odd here you remove zero and you put one and when you finish the loop you print the value of this counter third example is in pink color it is asking how many numbers that are positive or negative so we need to define a variable before the loop as integer you initialize it to zero and this is the variable in purple color or pink color inside the loop you increment the variable and see you are testing for number greater than zero so we will update the counter only if it is greater than zero and when we exit the loop we print the value another question we could ask on counting how many numbers are divisible by five so again we need a variable this is in a brown color we have a variable as integer you initialize it to zero before you enter the loop inside the loop you update it but we need a condition for it because not every number is divisible by five so how to check a number is divisible by five we use modulus and we check for the remainder equal equal zero if this is the case then the counter will be incremented by one and outside the loop we print its value so these are some examples on counting uh, uh, on counting and how to implement them uh, using loops now our next task is finding the maximum and minimum uh, before I show you the steps, let's go to our program in JGrasp that we did on counting and finding the summation and average to discuss how to find the maximum and minimum and then I will show you the steps in this slide. So let's go there. This is uh, our program by uh, reading a set of integers and a negative to stop. So we will put the other task, we will say find the maximum find and print find and print the maximum number maximum number or we can ask the minimum the only difference is that we change the condition uh, for an example if we have the following numbers 45.6 78.9 12.4 6.7 and then we will have minus 1 as a negative number to stop to find the maximum we need a variable to hold this maximum and since the data is double so the maximum should be also double so we will call it maximum and for safety initialize it to zero Okay, just for safety in case that the compiler complains that you did not initialize it just but there is no reason for making it zero because sometimes all the numbers are negative so the maximum will not be positive so zero will be the maximum and will give us wrong answer so the uh, just put it zero and then inside the loop we have to do the following uh, at the beginning you need to make sure that the maximum at the beginning is the first number and the first number is 45.6 this is what you're supposed to make sure that the maximum the first value for the maximum should be the first value of the data entered by the user when you declare your variable you don't know what the user will give us at the beginning so how we will find that the first number entered by the user and number is the first one uh, we will do the following uh, since we have a count and count counts the numbers count at the beginning is zero so when the user enter the first number then count will be equal to one so here we can check check if number is the first number entered by the user and how to do this you write f count equal equal one and now this is the first number 
But if you write this statement before a plus or plus, then you have to check for zero. Because look for the count. When you enter, when you take the value, you will increase count by one. So now this is the first number entered by the user. So what we supposed to do? We will say maximum is equal to number, and this is in, inside the loop. And this statement will be executed only at the beginning because the value of count in the next iteration will change and it will never come into it. This is the first step that we're supposed to do to guarantee that the first number will go into maximum. Next, for any number we read inside the loop, any number we read it inside the loop, if it is a greater than maximum, then the maximum also should be changed to this number, which is equal to number. Notice here now, this is the first number, so we will save it into maximum. Next time we are going to read this number in number, but this number is greater than the maximum. So we have to replace the previous maximum by this value by saying number is a maximum equal to number. Now these two statements, both of them cannot be true at the same time. Okay, because if it is the first, if count is equal to one, then we will move number into maximum. And if number is greater than maximum, so both of them cannot happen, uh, probably could happen at the same time. But if one of them is executed, then we don't need to do the other one. So we will put them inside else and F. So if this happened, we don't want this to happen. Although if it happens, it's going to be extra work. Next. So if count is equal equal to one, we will do the following. And if it is greater than maximum, now here we don't need else. Because if count is not equal to one, and if number is not greater than maximum, then we have to leave the maximum in its place. Now, look at this statement and look at this statement. Both do the same job. Both of them move number into maximum. So we can combine these two conditions in one. So we can say if counter equal equal to one or if number is greater than maximum because we have two actions under the same condition and one of them should be selected. So we say if count equal to equal to one or number greater than maximum, then change the maximum into number. These two, st this is what you're supposed to do first. You define your variable maximum, which will hold the maximum. Inside the loop, you write this condition, and it depends on count, because we have to guarantee that the first number should be saved in maximum, and we will depend on count. And when we finish from the loop, outside the loop, we need to print the maximum system.out.println, and we say that the maximum is, and we will print maximum. Let us trace it for these numbers. Okay, I will cut them. Control X. So they are now in the memory. And we will run the canvas. And we want the canvas smaller. Step N for the first statement. It will define the variables. It will print a message, enter a number, negative to stop. Now it is waiting for reading. Since I cut the data previously, so I can paste them here. Oh, it's not pasting by, so paste, control V. So it will read them one by one. When I press enter, then this next double will move 45.6 into number. So press enter. And now let us run the program step by step. In here, step by step. So now we have the variable number. I will drag it to trace it. And we have also maximum. We will trace it. And also we need count to trace it. Step N, now count has changed to one. So that means we are in the first iteration. And what we have inside number is the first number. Now, since the condition, this is OR, if one of them is true, 
then the whole condition will be true and count is equal to one so it will go inside and it will move number into maximum and see now maximum is equal to 4.45.6 uh, so it is guaranteed now now the first number is saved into maximum now in the next iteration the value of number is the next one which is 78.9 it is not the first number because count is not one so it is the second number because count is two for this condition this is false because count is two but number is greater than max see number it is 78.9 and it is greater than 45.6 so this looks like the previous maximum it has to be it has to be replaced by 78.9 and this is what's happening and see number is moved into maximum now the new maximum is 78.9 let's go for the next iteration now for the next iteration the value of number is 12.4 but 12.4 is not greater than maximum now we should not check for this condition because it's over it's not the first number it will be always false we need to check the second part of the condition and since number is not greater than so still maximum is the maximum number so it will be see it is a skipped now go to the next iteration number is 6.7 which is this one and again this is not greater than the maximum and maximum will not change and when we reach the sentinel we will go outside the loop since count is not equal to zero so we have data and it will print the result and see the last print it says that the maximum is 78.9 so this is how you calculate this is how you find the maximum of a set of numbers if you want to find the minimum all what you have to do just change this condition into less than because you are looking for the smallest number some of the students might think to solve it as follows since we need to put the first value into the maximum they say okay before we enter the loop how about we put maximum is equal to number and then remove this condition to test for the first number so all what we have to do we will put number in maximum in the first iteration max, uh, the same number is not greater than itself and then for the each next iteration we check for number if it is a greater than maximum we will change it it will work okay it will work so let's run it to show you that it is it will work give the data press enter and see it says the maximum is 78.9 even it will work if we don't enter any value if we don't enter any value like by saying minus one and from the beginning the program will say there is no data and nothing will be printed on the screen this will work for one reason this reason is that the variable we are using for or, or, or the maximum number we are looking for is the variable used for sentinel so look we are testing for the sentinel on number and we are finding the maximum on number so it works but imagine so i will return everything now back to its original solution because this will not always work okay now imagine that we need to read an id and for the id minus one will be the sentinel and suppose in addition to id we are also reading gpa and here we would like to find the maximum gpa so we need to read id and gpa for a bunch of students for many students but the variable we are testing for sentinel is id but we are not interested to find the maximum id doesn't make sense what's the meaning what's the meaning of maximum id however if it is required to find the maximum gpa so if you do it here because you are going to read id let me just do it if you are reading id although id is not defined next integer and you put the maximum you put the value of id but you are not looking for the maximum id you are looking for the maximum GPA and you are going to read GPA inside the loop. Therefore, it doesn't work that way. And the only solution that works for any type of input is that you depend on count 
If it is equal to one, then it's the first data, then you put any value of the data into the maximum. So follow this code if you want to find the maximum and minimum for any data. So let's go back to the slide. So here it says how to find the maximum and minimum. To find the maximum or minimum of the variable number, so assume number is the variable we, look, we want to look for its maximum. Do the following. Before entering the loop, define a variable max, we called it maximum in our exa example, and initialize it with any value, okay? Put any value, for example, zero. Inside the loop, check for number. If it is the first value, or if it is a greater than maximum, then replace maximum by this number. And we have already done it by testing for count. If count is equal to one, we are testing for the first value. And if number is greater than maximum, we are testing for the new maximum value. After exiting the loop, you display the value of the maximum. So here is the code, uh, the green color for minimum and the blue color for maximum. So in the beginning, max is equal to zero and minimum equal to zero. And we are going to depend on count. So we must have count. So if you want to find maximum and minimum, you have to also define count to count how many iterations or how many numbers you are reading. So here you are reading. So the sentinel depends on number. And if count is equal, equal one, or number is greater than max, we will change number into max. And for minimum, you use less than instead of greater than. When we finish the loop, we will test for count. If it is zero, then no data is entered by the user. Otherwise, we are going to print maximum and minimum. 